As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honour is not fitting for a fool. My name's Arthur and I thank you for joining me as we share some thoughts, starting with Proverbs chapter 26, verse 1. As snow in summer and rain in harvest, so honour is not fitting for a fool. But we expect snow in the middle of winter. We look forward to the summer when there is no snow. But if it snows in summer, we are very surprised. It is inappropriate weather for the season. Similarly, at harvest time, it's important to get the harvest in quickly. But rain that comes in harvest spoils the harvest. Generally, we want rain because rain promotes growth, but not in the week of harvest where it will destroy the crop. The grain shoots in the head and it's all downgraded to second grade stock feed. So honour is not fitting for a fool. The classic definition of a fool is the person who says there is no God. And that foolishness is demonstrated by disobeying the words of God. So Satan said to Eve, Has God said? And then promptly contradicted God, Surely you will not die. But of course, the wages of sin is death. And the fool who says there is no God and so lives according to his own wisdom will not be honoured in the end because all things will be revealed. There is nothing secret that shall not be revealed. At the peak of the Persian Empire, when Ahasuerus ruled from Egypt to India in 127 satraps. Initially he took guidance from seven counsellors, but one gained precedence over the others. His name was Haman. He was an ambitious person and promoted himself to Ahasuerus, boasting what he would do for the king, but actually planning what he would do for himself. And so was the senior counsellor to Ahasuerus. But Mordecai did not honour him. Mordecai saw through this ambitious man that he was a fool, that he was not concerned for the well-being of the people, he was simply concerned for himself. He was good at saying what Ahasuerus wanted to hear, and Ahasuerus seems to have been a little bit insecure in his position for we find that he was subject to fits of anger. And so while Haman was elevated and many of the courtiers bowed not only to the king but also to Haman, Mordecai stood upright and was dobbed in for it by some of the other courtiers. And when Haman learned of this, he determined he would not only destroy Mordecai, but he would destroy Mordecai's people too. Indeed, all the Jews spread across the whole Persian realm. So in this way, it wasn't just his own pride, but he had an agenda. He had an agenda against the living God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool will take on God. And, of course, the fool will lose. Well, we can proceed with the story and see how the Lord worked through circumstances so that Haman's plan came back upon himself and he was destroyed. And Mordecai was promoted to his place. Haman epitomises the wisdom of the world, whereas Mordecai shows us the wisdom of God. Paul discusses this in the first epistle to the Corinthians. In chapter 3 he says, The natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And towards the end of chapter 3, he further says, 
let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Whether Paul, Apollos, or Cephas, or the world, or life, or death, or things present, or things to come, all are yours. You are Christ's, and Christ is God's. Honour is fitting to God, but it is not fitting to men who boast themselves against God. The exhortation of the New Testament, though, for believers, is that we are to honour those who are in authority over us. For God has appointed governing authorities to judge the wicked and to reward the righteous. And we are to pay taxes. So in Romans 13 we read, Render therefore to all their due. Taxes to whom taxes are due, custom to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honour to whom honour. Other common references to honour in the New Testament are a prophet is not without honour except in his own country and in his own house. Quoted by Jesus when the people in Nazareth did not honour him, although he was the Son of God. There was a familiarity breeds contempt component there. And the commandment was, honour your father and your mother. This is a command with promise. But these people draw near to me with my mouth and honour me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, Jesus said. But the one who is to receive most honour is the Lord Jesus and God. And in John 5, Jesus says that God has appointed the Son of Man to be the judge of all the earth, that all should honour the Son as they honour the Father. And he who does not honour the Son does not honour the Father who sent him. The Son is worthy of all honour because of... And it goes the other way as well. In John 12, Jesus says, If anyone serves me, him my Father will honour. And so there are those who seek eternal life by patient continuance in doing good. They seek glory, honour, immortality. For God honours those who are righteous in their lives. That is why Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, whether they are Jew or Gentile. And so honour is to be earned. It is to be given to God. God has earned the honour of men by the incredible creation that he has made and also the fact that he loves us and cares for us and provides for us and has provided eternal salvation for us. And we honour him by doing the things that he says. As Jesus said, why do you call me Lord and not do the things that I say? So to him belong all honour and everlasting power. But we are not to honour ourselves. We are not to boast of ourselves. We are to humble ourselves, put ourselves last. Let others honour us if they see any value in us. Even Jesus said it's not sufficient for him just to declare that he was the Son of God. People had to look at the evidence of his life. And he gave the evidence in John 5. John the Baptist had testified of him. Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. The Father had called out from heaven at his baptism. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. The miracles that Jesus performed testified of him. But most of all, it is the record of the Old Testament scriptures saying beforehand the things that he would do that identifies him as the one whom we should honour. But he will honour us in the judgment with crowns of righteousness according to the works that we have done for his glory. Honour is not appropriate for the fool. For the fool.